Hello there, I'm Tom Chick. We're in my dining room on April 27th, 2020. Uh, I want to talk to you today about math, superheroes, board gaming, uh, and the intersection amongst them. Because here's the deal. You guys might have seen previously, I played a fair bit of Marvel Legendary Deck Builder game. Uh, I was just randomly throwing together heroes and villains and schemes like you're supposed to do in that game. Uh, and uh, it went pretty well. But it made me curious to then revisit some of my other superhero board games. Marvel Champions, for instance, by Fantasy Flight, which... Uh, I'll have more to say about that later, perhaps. But of course, one of the classics is <clears throat> Sentinels of the Multiverse. And I'm sure we all know this one. You take at least three heroes. I didn't realize this until I went back to it and played a few times and thought... This is horrifically difficult. What am I doing wrong? You need to play with at least three heroes. If you go in with just two heroes, uh, forget about it. Uh, you pick your three heroes, you pick your villain, and then you pick an environment, a setting. And each of those is a deck of cards. And they all kind of fight against each other. Uh, so in the middle of the book, in the sort of centerfold here, to help you out, because the, the folks who made the game they're going to let you tune it for them. You can see here's a list of the complexity rating for the different heroes. You'll notice that's not the same as difficulty. Complexity, something completely different. Here's some difficulty ratings. These are for the villains. So you get a sense for with which villain you pick and with which heroes you're using, how hard of a time you should be having with the game. Well, uh, that wasn't really happening. I it started out a game. I got my. I finally realized. Okay, you need three heroes in there, and I just kept like losing over and over again, and thinking this is this can't be right. What is going on here? Obviously, I'm relearning the game. There's some of that, but there's got to be something else going on here. So, I did whatever anybody else would do in that situation. I went to the internet. And what I found on the internet, I've, I've got called up right here for me on my iPad. It's not formatted very conveniently, so I'm just going to put it up on the screen for you guys. This is the uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse difficulty score system. It's just a bunch of information which has ratings, uh, numbers that go from like 100 to negative 100, uh, for the difficulty for any given hero and villain and environment. Much more complex than this stuff, which is just numbers 1 to 3. Oh, there's some fours in here. A couple of these uh, villains are difficulty four. So using the math on this sheet, which uses this naive beige predictor indices, uh, here is what I have determined is the easiest possible way to play Sentinels of the Multiverse. You, you cannot lose doing this. Fight Ambuscade, this dude right here. He can cloak. He has like a various guns that he uses to hunt the superheroes with. Your team should consist of Legacy. He's Captain America, basically. Tempest. It's like Creature from the Black Lagoon mixed with... Uh, I guess that guy from Hellboy who lives in the fish tank. Abe Fishman, whatever. And Haka. He's Hawaiian Hulk. And you guys should all fight in the final wasteland which is a place that has a bunch of uh, what are called cryptids, you know, like uh, uh, Bigfoot, Abominable Snowman, Chupacabra, Jersey Devil, that kind of stuff. That's a negative 280 on this naive Bayes predictor index rating. Uh, and sure enough, you play this way, I'm pretty sure you're going to win every time. You're going to feel like the best superhero of all time. You're also going to eventually feel like, oh, poor Ambuscade. That guy is like a, a, a sort of a minimum wage Cato. He's like a punching bag, a training dummy. I felt sorry for the poor guy. So up next, I'm going to boost the difficulty level. I have found a combination, and just by looking through the uh, various numbers, that levels out at zero. Now, zero, if we go look at the sheet, zero doesn't quite mean oh, you'll win or lose half of the time. For whatever reason, that's where there's a 27% chance you'll lose. Now, using my own naive Bayes indices predictor, that then says to me, there is a 73% uh, chance I'll win. Uh, so, I've assembled a collection 
that comes in at zero and it consists of these folks in this place. And I don't know what most of this is, but I intend to find out. Here we go. The villain is Infinitor. It's like a green silver surfer? I don't know. Uh, he will go up against Unity. I actually do know who she is. She is the equivalent of a, of a pet class. She's got a bunch of robots. Parse, who, uh, Hawkeye? I don't know, she's got a bow. And also fighting against Setback? Yeah, that looks like Robin. In the Enclave of the Endless. No idea. This comes in right at zero. So this combo, assuming that I know what I'm doing, assuming that the naive Bayes predictor is correct, if I play four games with this combo, I will win three of them. Uh, and that's what I intend to find out in Sentinels of the Multiverse. Uh, come back tomorrow and I'll let you know how that went. All right, I'll see you then. Cheers. Oh, shoot a monkey.